Hey everybody, it's Safi and Marco Dish Out on Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. It's just Marco here once again, and I am here to review Hell's Kitchen Season 22, Episode 6. Uh, you know, the, at least the preview was good, right? Like, the preview for this episode made it look like it was going to be like an A-plus episode, and then you get to the actual episode, and it's like, meh, meh, meh. Seeing the movie that I already saw last week today was actually better than the Hell's Kitchen episode. And by the way, guys, I did have three more Gordon Ramsay frozen meals, and they were really really bad I mean if if the beef wellington tastes like it tasted like in his frozen beef wellington bites then he does not even deserve to be called a chef anymore because like I swear like number one I don't know why he would approve to have frozen meals made after he criticizes over and over how bad frozen food is frozen food bad frozen food bad but then he makes these terrible frozen meals and he puts he puts so much salt in his food i i was making a joke like if you ate at his house every day or like just any any time like it it would be surprising like if someone didn't drop dead from eating all that salt at the dinner table because like he he puts like it's ridiculous it's like it tastes like even more salt than like fast food in his food even though it isn't i guess like i mean i don't really think it's as much but anyways those frozen meals are really bad so this episode starts off though with uh the mother of six she's talking with her teammates and Right off the bat, I kind of had a feeling she was going to go home this episode because sometimes the editors like they'll they'll kind of have more of the chef going home in the episode if that makes any sense like they'll include like more clips of them so that it it kind of I don't know like creates a narrative or something like Kind of like in The Walking Dead, if you guys ever used to watch that crappy show, whenever, like, a character would get killed off in that show, they would always have, like, a highlight episode, or they would have, like, a a big speech, you know, where they would say, like, some stupid shit, and it would be really sad or sentimental, and then, boom, they get killed, like, immediately after. Like, that's always the big dead giveaway that like someone is going home or i mean being killed on the walking dead it's like they get like spotlighted and it's the same thing i think in hell's kitchen and master chef where they kind of want to create like this narrative so that you can understand as an audience member like why this person in particular went home that night and you know the mother of six she did end up going home and the first thing she said, too, was kind of strange. Because and my cat, by the way, is watching me do this review. He's like, he's like oh, what are you doing, Marco? Like, it's really hilarious. He's like, he's like sitting there like, mm, this is fucking bullshit, Marco. This fucking episode was bullshit. <laughs> he's got a real... Maybe I'll take a picture of him because he's got a really funny look on his face right now. And then I won't have to, like put creativity into making like a a picture of the mother of six in some sort of dilemma like I did with the last two pictures uh but she says that she doesn't start drama which that's that's a lie because like you know there's been multiple instances in the show where she has started drama like in not really deliberately but just like you know, calling people out, like, you know, last week, or what week was that? I think it was last week, where she called out Jason, and she said, like, you should have gone home, Matthias was better than you, and she was, like, really, really getting on him, and, and, uh, so that was starting drama, 
because like he, he I don't think he, up to that point he had ever like attacked her or anything like directly like that so that was her starting drama and then after that she said that she feels really schoolgirlish and she never felt that way until this show and I was like, you know, you really can't say both of these things. Like, you can't say that you don't start drama, and then right after that say that you feel school schoolgirlish, because that's like, you're contradicting yourself. You know, you those two, those two don't go together at all. That's, that's not the same character at all. You know, that should be two separate people saying those things. Uh, so, yeah. And it's just like I said, too, she she was very schoolgirlish last episode, so at, at least she acknowledged that, you know. So they started things off with a football fusion challenge where a man would go up against a woman and had to kick the ball and hit, like, a a type of cuisine, and then they would have to fused infused how, how would you say it infuse those two types of dishes together uh sorry i don't know why that just psh, i just got i i got out of a four-hour movie before i watched this episode like leave me alone guys <laughs> and then jason he he had a lot of trouble kicking the soccer ball but he he claimed he works out a lot uh which I don't know if that's true, honestly, like, I mean, maybe, but, like, it's obviously not weightlifting, because, I mean, he doesn't really look that much in shape, like a bodybuilder, you know, I've, not to brag, because, obviously, I still have a lot of work to do, personally, but, um, it, it, my peak, so far, I have had better, like, looking results than what he has and so you know I don't really believe that and he he couldn't kick a soccer ball for shit and so he had to kick over and over and over again and and that was pretty hilarious and especially because he had to go up up against Sammy which is like a nightmare like if I had to go up against Sammy I would just quit the show (laughs) I mean, no, no, not, okay, since it's a challenge, I wouldn't quit the show, I would quit the challenge, I would be like, I'm just gonna make the worst dish possible, because, like, there's no way, if, even if I made my best dish, that it would beat Sammy's dish, uh, probably, and then Silent Sandra, I feel bad for her, she seems like such a nice person, and she seems like, like a person that you want to be friends with and that you want to you know be friends with her so you can take advantage and and get all her yum yums you know like her fucking cheese steaks and shit like you know she seems like a really great person but I don't really think she's going to make it on the show at all she's been up for elimination like a million times and uh, her team isn't crazy about her they kind of look at her as just like the disposable person you know, like, you know, because they're all so full of themselves, because they all think that they're the greatest, they all look at her as, like, she's that, that girl that, like, oh, let's just put her up, she was trash, put her up, they're, they're gonna do that next week, too, you know, like, if, if they do have to nominate someone, I can guarantee you, they'll, they'll just put her up again by default, because why, why not? Why not? I mean, she's uh, she's silent Sandra, so let's fuck with her. <laughs> but she set her lamb on fire, and I was worried that she was going to overcook it. And, well, turns out she undercooked it, and it was, like, raw. So that was pretty embarrassing. Sammy had trouble making the sauce for her Indian Greek dish. Because she forgot to make the sauce until the last minute. Ah, so you had two kind of bait and switches there. Like the editors were trying to make this episode more entertaining by kind of tricking you to think that uh, to think that these bad things would happen. It's like, oh no, actually the opposite of what you thought was going to happen happened. And uh, Silent Sandra, she... Oh, that was sad. 
But the saddest part was that she was embarrassed to serve it to Chef Gordon. And it's like, honestly, Silent Sandra, if you're watching this, go purchase one of Chef Gordon's frozen meals. Uh, and then <laughs> you will never be embarrassed to serve something bad to Chef Gordon again. Okay, because my mushroom risotto, it was so overcooked, it was like mush. And you and I know for a fact that if any of these frozen meals that he made would be served to him on a show, he would throw them against the wall and he would, you know, shout a bunch of F words. And uh, it would not be a good time if you served that to him on his show. So Silent Sandra, never be embarrassed again. Because somebody who is okay with releasing bad quality frozen meals like that is not somebody that you should be embarrassed about serving raw lamb to, okay? Like, the other guy, you know, who knows about him? Maybe he has some shitty frozen meals, too. I doubt it, though. He's a James Beard winner, you know? I mean, <laughs> whenever someone's a James Beard winner, you know that they're, 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 they're the shit. They're the big cheese. And then Danya the Fusion Queen, which she was the fusion girl who made that great dish in the opening episode, she made a leathery Mexican dish and lost her matchup. And then Jason, he made a terrible looking dish. It just looked like some sort of like old people pretentious 1980s dish. And he had these hard dates on the plate that like were just rock hard. And uh, he definitely, he easily lost to Sammy. The mother of six, now I don't want to pile on her because she started crying this episode. And uh, it's obvious that, you know, she's just, she, let's be honest guys, she was a master chef. She should have been on Master Chef, not Hell's Kitchen at all. Like, there's been so many fucking times in the show so far where Chef Gordon is like, oh, you need more experience. You need more experience. And it's like, hello? You're the one who cast these people. You, th these people are there because of you. Like, this is Hell's Kitchen. Like, it's not Master Chef. Master Chef is supposed to be the place where the people lacking experience are. And for some reason, you're, like, wondering why they're doing bad when they're not qualified to be there. <laughs> or, like, she is Master Chef material. She is not Hell's Kitchen material. Uh, and she made a terrible dish. She made a gruel poke bowl. It looked terrible. It's probably the worst dish of the night, along with Jason's dish, his fucking date dish. If he served that on a date, he'd never be getting a call back again. That's for damn sure. Uh, oh, I almost dropped my phone. I think the uh, spirit was mad at me for criticizing Jason. But don't worry, I won't criticize him too much more because he was far from the weakest person in the episode. And then I will say, too, the last two fish dishes in this challenge, I think that they were like the best-looking dishes of the night. Uh, first off, you had Jonathan's dish. This is probably the best dish of his so far to me. Uh, it had some really nice looking crispy skin and some creamy sauce. And then I would just ignore those uh, oysters or whatever they were <laughs> on the plate too. I would just be like, yeah, and just slide those into the trash right there. And just eat eat and munch on this fish just yum 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 and speaking of yum 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 Carmen what did you do with this beautiful dish this fish dish oh I bet it took a lot of mental gymnastics to come up with that dish didn't it and it looked amazing so those two dishes I really I could have eaten either of them and been happy. Uh, and then the worst ones I already said. So the men once again win. And the women once again lose. 
And that was the point where Ashley started making her sad face like usual. She got re- she didn't get a sad this episode because <laughs> she the the punishment wasn't as bad, but she still had that that sad face that she always has. It was really funny like you knew that sad that sad face was coming. It's just like in horror movies nowadays where, you know, the final girl always looks constipated. And it's like, but with Ashley, you know that she's always going to look sad. So the women had to prepare a carbonara for that night's service. The men got to play a fun game outside where they're like in these giant bubbles. And then this is where the mother of six says, I'm inching closer to saying, fuck this shit. And then she cries. And I thought, that right there, that is her, that is the cementation of her going home for sure. Because once once you start to say, even like if you're thinking about saying F this shit, that's a sign that you need to go home, you know? Uh, so she was basically halfway to becoming Melissa. Uh, I'm just surprised that she went home so fast. You know, both these people, I knew that they would go home eventually, but they, they fast. And the Cuban guy, uh, apparently he got surgery for an abscess on one of his hands or what or something. And uh, the 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 reward actually backfired and it aggravated his hand uh injury that was it, i guess it was a failed surgery or something and so uh that was terrible too i mean he uh i will say like he he actually fought through that pain for the entire service so i applaud him for that because so far i have not been the biggest fan of him And so I would say that that was his best moment so far. So he should really be thankful for that because it it proved that he was a better chef than I thought he was. The women's team started off with a fire. And then Demir started off being a good leader in the men's team, which is good to see. You know, it really would be good to see like a leader appearing in both teams instead of just every man for himself and then sometimes people are leaders just sometimes like temporary leaders that's not the way to do things that's not the way to have a consistent like victory every week to have like temporary leaders who just change at the drop of a hat but then right off the bat on the women's team the lobster is raw and once again, I'm I tell I told you guys for the millionth time the lobster was raw first. I don't know what it is with this lobster being raw. Like what is it with lobster? Is it just hard to tell if it's raw or not from the weird like fork and finger thing that they do, the the, the test that they do? Like I don't know. But these people they they can't handle lobster. Uh, at the start of these services, <laughs> like it's always, I, I, and I'm, you know what? I bet next week the first thing that's gonna be raw is lobster, and if I'm wrong, I don't know. Punish me by feeding me that awful looking poke bowl. No, don't do that. I don't want. I've already had to eat Chef Gordon's meals, and that was like suffering, kitchen nightmares level shit. So. Jason started rushing his fish so that the other meats had to rush, and then those meats were raw. He was trying to cut corners. Danya and Carmen were working really well together, which was nice, because it doesn't seem like Carmen is very much of a team player in the other episodes, so, you know, maybe she's tempering down and, you know, she's being tamed. Is it possible to tame Carmen? <laughs> I know I know how that sounded and I I apologize. <laughs> so both teams actually ended very strongly and there really isn't much to talk about with the service other than that. Which was I thought that 
<clears throat> that was a very nice surprise considering how low the morale was on the women's team. And then, of course, the injury on the men's team. The Cuban guy, he uh, he quit. He said, look, my body is giving up on me. And uh, he, he quit right after the end of that service. And I also think, you know, once again, good on him because he quit because he knew that he wasn't as, at his 100%. And that was a great thing to do for his team. And it was a great thing to do so that he wouldn't look bad on television as well. Because um, he needs to heal up. He needs to get better. And Chef Gordon agrees. You know, he needs to go home. Get get a blanket on, have your girlfriend cook you a Gordon Ramsay frozen meal, and then just laugh at the television screen as you eat that shit, that shitty slop, and then just go like, wow, I can't believe this guy is the one that's like the most popular chef in the world, like with this shit that he serves you at Walmart. And then the teams, for some reason, they still had to nominate their weakest chefs. I don't know why they had to do that. I thought that that was stupid. Uh, I felt like that he was just trying to either send someone weak home that he really wants to send home, or because he wanted to make the episode more entertaining. I don't know. I have no idea. It seemed really unnecessary and kind of dumb. So Silent Sandra and Mother of Six get nominated, as well as Jason and Jermaine. And once again, Jason is nominated just because the men's team doesn't like him. And, you know, one of these days that is going to bite him in the rear. Because, you know, even though he he did not deserve to be up there at all, by the way. Like, there, there was no reason for him to be put up for elimination, But then again, I told you guys, like, no one should have been put up this week. Uh, But then again, Mother of Six went home. And yeah, I mean, she, she she did deserve to go home at some point because she wasn't the strongest chef. And she was very drama oriented. And she seemed like she was more of a Master Chef contestant who was, for some reason, planted inside Hell's Kitchen. I don't know if that was like an idea that someone had, like, oh, it'd be really funny if we put Master Chef contestants in a in a Hell's Kitchen season. Like, I don't know who thought that was a good idea, but they need to be fired. But then again, the person who helped Chef Gordon with those frozen meals needs to be fired too. So I would give this episode Excuse me, sorry. I would give this episode a B minus. I think that this episode has been the weakest one so far, but it was still entertaining to watch, and uh, I guess it was nice that the mother of six went home so that so that she wouldn't have to struggle anymore. Episode can be a a home run, you know. But I still really like watching it, and I can't wait to taste more terrible frozen Walmart food next week. Frozen Walmart food. So goodbye, oh wait, please like this video, comment, and tell me what you thought of the episode. And then (laughs) my cat is now scratching at the door, so I'll let him out, by the way. That's why I'm a little distracted. And then please subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more Hell's Kitchen reviews. Goodbye everybody, see you soon.